I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I'm Coach Victoria and in this video we're going to be talking to you about they may not be talking to you but they're still thinking about you. Mm. You know when you're in no contact you just really struggle with believing that that person is still thinking about you. Uh, you really kind of believe that they've moved on. You start to think about things like well they never even cared about me. They probably uh, never cared about me and we can really spiral out of control. Mm -hmm. We tend to correlate their silence with their lack of caring. Yeah, and that is simply not true. Now, yes, there are situations where it is true that you were dating somebody who maybe was really selfish or has serious emotional issues and they really don't bond or attach to other people. But for the most part, if you're in a relationship with somebody and they really love you and care about you and they had a strong bond with you, they're going to think about you a lot more than you realize. And it's going to be a lot harder for them than you realize. It looks easy because of how they're treating you, but particularly as time goes by, they do think about you more and more. Right. And the more and more I'm in this profession, the more I realize we do not know what's happening behind people's eyes. We just don't. Yeah. You know, people's emotional processes don't always show on the outside so it's really hard to guess and try to think about what they're thinking and anticipate when we just don't know and a lot of times that would surprise you if you grew up in a house where you didn't get a lot or of love and affection or attention growing up it's even harder to believe that in the silence that they are still caring about you, mm -hmm. right? Because you've had your own attachment issues and traumas in your early childhood. So take a good look at your own childhood and see if there's a correlation with believing in people and trusting people that stemmed all the way back from when you were little, because there probably is, mm -hmm. right? People that I think grew up in healthier homes are more likely to think yeah, they probably are thinking about me, even though we're not talking. Right, or at least see the gray area, yeah. not see it in black and white, as if they're out of sight, they must not care, they're not here, they're not investing, so that's final. Versus thinking it's much more complicated than that. People can feel a certain way and say something different, act something different. Sometimes it's not all congruent. No, it's not. And what I've seen is that the people that are really struggling with their emotions and their trauma and their mental health, they often are the most vocal in saying they're out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. They're never coming back. I give up. They never really loved me. They don't love you. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a lot of toxic, unhealthy people getting really vocal about their situation. Yeah. So be careful because you know, we've been doing this for a long time. We talk to a lot of dumpers. And while not everybody will have a chance to get their ex back, if you focus on the personal growth, you're gonna be far more likely to be ready if and when that happens. Mm -hmm. You can't fail by focus on healing and getting to a great place. Right, and I, I get it. Everybody is so afraid of being the fool, mm -hmm. the person who had hope, the person who did, you know, wish that things would be different. But we always think authenticity is best, saying true to what you want mm -hmm. and working towards that. Does that mean that you have to flop over like a fish if your ex says, hey, I'm back? Not necessarily. We talk about this all the time in all of our videos of ways that you can also have standards and you can also create a better relationship, not just settling for you know your ex coming back and that's it. Yep. No, so we talk about that, but Absolutely. what we're going to focus on in this video is that we don't know what your ex's emotional process is really like. That's right. So I got a really good email coaching today that's going to kind of cover a lot of the things that we're talking about because we get a lot of situations, especially on our calls, where we see things like this playing out in real time with our clients. 
But just understand that a lot of times people shut down and back away and they're silent, but it doesn't mean they don't care. And this is especially if you've dated somebody with an avoidant attachment style. Mm -hmm. They are notorious for kind of shutting down and not having communication, but it often hits them hard when you leave them alone and you stop reaching out because then they feel like they're losing you, okay? So this is from a couple in their early 30s. And they said, hi, Coach Craig. I'm a really big fan of your channel and I've learned so much from you all. I've been telling all my friends about your channel and we look forward to talking about what we are learning. That's great. <laughs> That's so wholesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for sharing us with your friends and family. It means a lot to us, you know, that you believe in what we're sharing and how we're, you know, really helping you in your life. So we always appreciate that. <laughs> my boyfriend and I had our struggles over the last three years. Like most relationship, the first year was really great. I spent a lot of time with his family. They treated me like part of the family and I always felt like they really wanted me to marry him. I know that occasionally his mother would ask if he was happy, which somehow I felt like was putting doubts in his head. Mm. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Making him rethink things. Are you, maybe it was the tone. Are you, are you happy? Oh yeah, and a mother's influence on, on somebody, especially their choice of partner, is unmatched. Yeah, yeah, it, it can have a big influence. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was intentional or not, because she always treated me with kindness when I was at any family function. He liked my family, but seemed a little uncomfortable around them. I think he felt a little pressured when he was around my family, and I think he was a tad worried about saying or doing the wrong thing with them. My father can be rather loud and opinionated at times, so I think he was worried about what he may say and what was a bit reserved, and maybe meant she meant was a bit reserved, to just be himself, okay. Well, you know, sometimes it's intimidating to be around oh, yeah. somebody's family, so maybe right. some of that was going on. And sometimes culturally, we are taught from a young age to respect our elders, and especially coming into another family's home to be super respectful. So it could be one of those, you know, trying to be polite mm. and not draw too much attention to yourself as a cultural norm. Yeah, sometimes it gets a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. intimidating. Mm -hmm. It didn't cause for much tension, but around the holidays, my family tended to be a bit more neglected. I tried to express that we didn't spend time with the family equally, but he often just defended himself and it would lead to arguments. As our relationship went on, it seemed like he was more overwhelmed with work, which he often has to travel for. I tried not to put pressure on him when he did, but I know I said things at times that made him feel guilty. I would get frustrated when he came home and I, and I felt like he was prioritizing spending time with friends rather than me. But again, he would just defend himself and seem to shut down. Thanks to your channel, I've realized that my anxious attachment style has made me put pressure on him and led to more arguing. And I love the fact that she's reflecting back and being able to see, okay, this is how he was responding to this stressor. Mm -hmm. Working more, now spending more time with family, feeling maybe a little bit rushed or pressed for time, and shutting down being the response. So she's looking back and noticing, okay, how, how does this reflect on our attachment styles? Mm -hmm. How did we both show up? And that's exactly what we try and help you guys mm -hmm. see, because when you see these things, you can make major changes. And I'm sure in the moment, she might have been taking that personally. Yes. We're spending all of this time with your family. This is all your about friends. you and your stress. When you come back from your trip, you're prioritizing your friends, and mm -hmm. it, then it starts to hurt. Right. Makes sense. When I started to talk about marriage and moving in together, he kept saying he wants to, but he's just not ready yet. I started to question how much he cares about me, which, of course, led to more arguing. We finally had a big blow up fight where I felt like he didn't care about us and me because he was prioritizing his friend who was having some problems. He said he loved me and adored me, 
but that he wanted a break to think about things. He said he doesn't think he can give me what I need right now and doesn't want to hold me back. How many times do we hear avoidance Ooh, say that? That is the classic line for a breakup, yeah. avoidance. I can't give you what you need. And they really mean it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is that that's an authentic thing that they're feeling. They really feel like they can't give mm -hmm. what the other person needs. And it's probably partially true. They probably don't have those skills or know how to truly reassure or show up for their partner. Yep. You know, and vice versa, the anxious per person might not have the language or even the, the guts to clearly ask for, for what they think they need. And so, so far I'm seeing a miscommunication here. Yep. Yep. And a misalignment. Yep. And how she's interpreting things is that mm -hmm. he doesn't really care. But you're going to see what we were talking about at the onset of the video start to really come out, okay? Just watch what happens. I spent about three weeks trying to change his mind. I called him. I get angry at him and said he didn't really care. That he probably found someone else even though I didn't really believe that. Mm. I made all the typical mistakes until I found your channel. I decided I had to go no contact to at least respect myself. I started seeing a therapist and I'm doing your workbooks every day. As I started focusing on myself and really fi stayed fixated on me, she put in bold <laughs> caps, I started noticing that he was doing more and more things that he hadn't been doing. About three months ago, he texted my brother about some clothes he had left at his place. Okay, so there we have the mm -hmm. contacting friends and family that we yeah, see. Yeah, about some clothes he had left. This better be some Louis Vuitton or Gucci <laughs> that he left. Exactly. Because if he's calling about the old navy shirt with three holes in it, then this is a different story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But this is what we say. What, what, what do we say to look for? Mm -hmm. Contacting your friends and family. They don't want to do it directly to you. So a lot of times they do yeah. indirect things like this. Now this isn't indirect direct because he didn't contact her, but it is indirect. <laughs> I just always find it funny, the, the contacting about leaving stuff. Yeah. You know, I remember during one of my breakups, I had left a piece of Tupperware <laughs> and I just considered it the exit fee of the relationship. It was a nice Tupperware. It was one of those glass ones. It must have been like maybe 12 bucks. I was going to say 12 bucks. I was, I was literally going to be like, like $12. That was the exit fee. <laughs> Okay, interesting. So he's reaching out to the brother about these clothes. Okay. So she's seeing little differences in his behavior through time. Uh-huh. Okay. My brother said he came by to pick them up and he apologized for how things played out. Said he didn't mean to hurt me and asked how I was doing. Mm -hmm. mm, very suspicious, right? Mm -hmm. And we see stuff like this all the time. My brother said he looked sad about everything and hoped my parents would forgive him. That he still loves my family and doesn't want them to be mad at him. So that shows he cares. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't think about those things unless you're really caring about somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? And for him, it's also showing some of how he's interpreting the situation. He's afraid that the family is going to be mad at him. So as if he's, you know, done something terribly wrong, as mm -hmm. if he wasn't enough for her. I think this is important because so far it seems like the story has been, oh, he just doesn't really care. You know, he's... He's very apathetic about this relationship when really we can see how loaded yep. this is. There's guilt there, even for the idea of hurting her. Yeah. So a few weeks ago, I had noticed he had stopped or started watching a few of my stories. I honestly was shocked when it happened. At one point, I couldn't find his Instagram profile for about a week. I realized he had blocked me. I thought maybe he, had, he saw something he didn't like. But then about a week or so later, I saw I was unblocked. Mm. So there we have more of the behavior we talk about. You think that because you're not talking, they've moved on, they don't care about you, but here we have him contacting the brothers. He's watching, he's blocking, and then he's unblocking. Just like we see. A few weeks later, he liked a Facebook picture I posted. He also reacted to a funny meme I posted but I did not respond. I did not feel like that was him making a big enough attempt to connect. I wanted him to work a bit harder than just liking a post. And I would tell her she did great there mm -hmm. because 
a lot of times you get that like and yeah. you're like, ah, how have you been? I would love to see you. I yeah. miss you. <laughs> Are we going to get back together? Oh, yeah. I just like the post. <laughs> yeah. So she did good. Mm -hmm. We don't consider that a reach out. Mm -hmm. Okay. They need to make a direct message to you. Something, a comment, something, but it's got to be more than just a like. Yeah. That's not enough. Mm -mm. About a week later, he liked a post that I was tagged in with my family. I stayed silent and didn't respond. I could see he was posting stories, but I really tried not to look at them. From what I could tell, it seemed like they were, they may have been trying to get my attention. Uh, okay, so now he's escalating. He didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't get attention that way. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to start posting stuff, hoping she'll look. One was him at a place we had gone on several dates on. Another had a band we really liked. Boy, the, the, it's always the music. Yeah. It's always the memes. It's always yeah. the bands. It's like, it's predictable. The music hits different too. Yeah. Especially oh, that's our song. Songs. Yeah. That was our song from our favorite band. <laughs> the double whammy. And he's wearing the shirt I gave him it to really the concert with the song. Mm -hmm. With that, my favorite song from the band that we've been to, right? <laughs> I don't think any of this is coincidental. No, no, it's usually not. Yeah. Sometimes it is, but it's usually not. And sometimes, you know, the avoidant won't even be able to admit it to themselves that that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're saying, oh. oh no, I just really like this band. Oh I yeah, just no, really I like just happen to wear that shirt. Right. <laughs> In the very least, it's an unconscious attempt to connect with you or to make some I think sort so. of, you know, but it, I agree, it's still not direct enough. Yeah. He needs to use his words like a big boy. <laughs> All right, there's a little bit more here. And I really felt he was trying to get my attention when he posted about a show I really enjoy. And he knows it. Yeah, so he's he's trying, mm -hmm. but he's he's too scared to reach out, which is what happens. But you got to wait for that. You want them to send a message. There's a big difference between liking and posting stuff like that and an actual direct message to mm -hmm. you. And especially in this relationship, since it seems like one of the main issues here was that she felt like he didn't care, and he knows that. And so at this point, he needs to be a little bit more direct, a little bit more assertive that he to cares. show that effort. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more here. Finally, about three weeks later, he asked me if he could drop off some of my things that he had to return. He also said he would fix one of the pipes in the bathroom. He wants to fix her pipes. Come on. <laughs> okay. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but we do see often, you know, exes wanting to give their ex a hand. You know, oh, let me help out. I always said that I would fix your tire. Yeah. You know, and you're like, wait, for six months of our relationship, this tire has been busted. And exactly. Now you're coming back to fix mm -hmm. it. So, you know, I see it as a, as an attempt and particularly guys, they right. want to, they want to do something. Right. Right. And if you want to take it metaphorically, of course, there's that route, <laughs> but there's also the route of wanting to repair something. <laughs> now, if you're a deep thinker, <laughs> but not too deep. <laughs> the psychotherapist in us is thinking about the metaphor. <laughs> All right. There's a little more. Uh-huh. I told him he didn't need to, but he said he felt bad because he promised to take care of it before we broke up. Mm. We arranged for him to come over and he looked good. I tried to play it cool. I stayed calm. He literally asked how the cat was. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everybody ask about the cat? It is ridiculous. It happens so often. Wow. And it's you and it's always like 80% the cat over the dog for whatever reason. It's never like the dog. Sometimes it's the dog, but it's usually the cat. This is true. I'm sure animal shelters have seen like an 80% increase in cat rescues since this channel began. <laughs> I got to get a cat for my next relationship. <laughs> it's the only way we'll repair. Oh man, and she even said I tried so hard not to laugh because you can imagine she already knew. Yeah. <laughs> After a while of being there, it felt like old times. Our energy felt different, like we weren't even broken up. I felt I could be myself a bit more. And that happens too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the pressure was off a little bit there and she asked, you know, that they were just kind of there together for a while. It's like they kind of forgot about that breakup and they relaxed, which is good. Yeah. Because so, so often we get stuck in the breakup 
we're broken up dynamic mm -hmm. and the attraction that you had is kind of like gone and now it's like this complete different power dynamic mm -hmm. right and it's so wild how it can go both ways it can be somebody that you've known for years and years and years that one day you see them and you see them changed like a totally different person yeah. but it can also go this way where you have known somebody and there has been a major rupture that you think, man, will I be able to ever see this person in the same light again? Will we be able to connect in the same ways that we used to? And you would be surprised even after some pretty serious ruptures, some pretty serious wounds in a relationship, mm -hmm. that chemistry still being there, that connection and that warmth still being there. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here and it's, it's refreshing. Yep. Yeah. Is a little more here? When he finished, he said that he does miss me. And I said, I miss him too. He said that even though we hadn't been talking, he thought about me every day. How many times do you hear this? Mm -hmm. All the time. All the time. I know it doesn't feel like it when you're going through it, but we get a lot of dumpers too. Mm -hmm. And we get a lot of people that we're talking to in these situations where they start getting contact with their ex again and they hear this. Mm -hmm. And this to me is really heartbreaking too, because imagine just what kind of experience he's, he must have had to lead up to a point where you're feeling strongly about somebody and afraid to share that with them yep. out of fear of rejection, out of fear of it going sideways. So this to me, it's, it's vulnerability mm -hmm. and I like to see it from him. Yeah, that's a good change, mm -hmm. right? He thought about our relationship and our problems. He said it would be nice if we could just start fresh and see how it goes. My anxiety wanted me to desperately ask if we would be getting back together, but I knew better. So I said, well, why don't you take some time and get back to me when he wants to see me? So she handled that well. Mm -hmm. She was ready to panic. She was ready to explode and mm -hmm. tell him everything she felt, but she didn't. He said he knows he wants to see me soon. I said, well, he can get a hold of me whenever that was. He gave me a hug that I must admit felt much warmer than when we broke up. Do you think there's enough here to give us another chance? My heart is hoping there is. Well, there are some good signs and I like that he's been thinking about things and mm -hmm. hopefully he's committed to trying to fix the issues that you guys had and he's willing to recognize that you know he needs to step up a little bit more to show you that he cares and you have to work on your own attachment issues and the things that are triggering you so if maybe you start decreasing those triggers and you're not so sensitive and he steps up in his behavior and makes you a little bit more of a priority those two things together will really help you both feel good about things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I think for you being the more anxious person, it might be helpful to write out specifically two things. What can help you soothe during the times where you do feel a little bit more anxious? This can be, we have several videos on this, but this can be self-reassurance. Um, some couples have written down positive memories together or reassurances that that other partner usually says to kind of hold with yourself and remind yourself of that relationship yeah and the other side being exactly what you would need to see from him to feel loved and appreciated so yeah. what specifically helped you feel more connected was it words of affirmation was it physical touch was it good morning texts you know what specifically would help you feel more bonded with him and being more specific can help because sometimes we talk in these constructs like I you just, you should know. Yes, oh, those, that's the worst. Yes, Don't right. ever tell somebody they should know. <laughs> or, you know, I just feel uncared for and it's like, okay, what can I do? And it, it sounds like he's more than willing to try and to show up and be there. We hope. And yeah. we hope that that's consistent. Yeah. <laughs> Communication is key. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes patience along with it is as well. But I do think that you know, there's some really good signs here. Mm -hmm. And I liked how much he opened up about his experience and what he was going through. And as you can see, we have another person that was constantly thinking and about their ex, even though they weren't talking. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to believe it, but stay motivated, okay? You really gotta focus on changing 
working on healing your own attachment issues, communicating better, how to be a better partner, how to understand your partner better, how to understand their attachment issues better. And that way when you do all these things, you're gonna be a lot more likely to turn it around and get your ex back. Mm -hmm. And if they don't come back for whatever reason, or it falls apart again, you'll still have all those skills to be better in your other relationships and you'll have a better relationship with yourself. Right. And this person understanding some of that mm -hmm. caused them to not lash out at him. That's right. Now I could see in another situation she could have said, well, you haven't messaged me in so long. You know, how dare you try to show up to the my drama. house. And, <laughs> and all this resentment and anger coming out at him. Mm -hmm. And she could have also lacked boundaries when he said that he was thinking about restarting things. She could have completely dumped her emotions yep. and said, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this moment. Let's get back together right now. So she was able to have that nice balance and those boundaries to say, okay, you know, let's talk about this. Let's take this one step at a time and really be methodical about it. You so have like to respect that. yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't respect yourself, they're not going to respect you either. Mm -hmm. Okay. So good one here. Hopefully, hopefully you guys like this one. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you need. Just click on her name to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.